Okay, uh, we'll start now. So uh, really happy to be here to present uh, Eternal. Uh, so I am uh, Ronan, uh, like co-creator of Eternal. And so basically Eternal is uh, a multiplayer dungeon uh, procedurally generated on the blockchain inspired by uh, classic text and grid-based multi-user dungeon games. You can see example here of a few of the, er the early inspiration. Um, and here, uh, some of the like screen capture of, of the game on a mobile. So in, in the game is basically, uh, you are in a dungeon, a little character, and you can move around, uh, fight monsters, and collaborate as well uh, with other players <coughs> to fight. Uh, the particular thing about, oh yeah, so I mean, uh, yeah, let's, or another example of a uh, screen capture from the desktop here, where it shows a map uh, of the alpha running on the testnet right now. So all of these rooms have been generated by players around the, um, playing the game. Uh, the team is basically Gia, myself, uh, Ronan, and Lumir. Uh, and yeah, we are basically a team of uh, game developer and designer. Uh, so yeah, the particular thing about this game is that uh, every every action it's a f fully on chain. So every uh, meaningful action you can make in the game is basically a transaction. So whether it's move, attack, and so it means the rules of the game are set in the smart contract. There is no server to trust, uh, and this is also means that all the items uh, have a functionality set in the contract. Uh, and because it's on the blockchain, another property that it interestingly have is that it's a shared world. So the game is inherently multiplayer. Uh, and so uh, another thing uh, that obviously interests uh, a player here is that we follow the standards so that all the items that they collect in the game are tradable and interoperable with or the game potentially. So we follow ERC20 for base currency, ERC721 for unique items, and uh, ERC1155 for common item, which like yeah, pa partially fungible between themselves. Uh, so the reason we make a game on blockchain, I think is uh, similar to many here, um, is that there is at least two issues in uh, traditional, I mean some traditional game, ma mainly free to play, which is kind of the, in some ways, some of the same type of game. Uh, but this, these games uh, in the traditional market, they are a one-sided one -sided economy. So it's basically the player are just observer. They cannot influence or gain from the game economy growth. And the other aspect is that the game rule holds like drop rate and are black boxes. So a trust is required and unfair change may happen on the request. So there is basically the ability to influence the game developer at the expense of the one who can't or who don't feel it's right. Uh, so with blockchain, we can have a guarantee rarity which uh, provide a real economy for the game item and reward active players. And then true ownership, which gives player a part of the game independent of the creator. So they can use then the other aspect which really link to true ownership is the interoperability of the item so they can potentially be used in other game and application. And basically, the items are owned by the player. Uh, and so it changed the relationship between the player and the game developer. They have to now uh, have an aligned incentive to work together uh, for, for the game to flourish. But with Eternal, we go further. Uh, basically, uh, with our game, we can't change the rule. So we can't be influenced. We can't be unfair because uh, as soon as the game is launched, the rules are set. What it means for the item is that now they are not only data, they are not only a visual representation of an item, they are also functional items. So we move from a decorative only value of the item to uh, a functional value. Obviously in some game, even if, if they are off-chain, off -chain, they still have a functional value, but now it's not an intrinsic part of the item. It's dependent on uh, a third party. So what it means, I mean, yeah, so it makes the game world independent of the creator. So, and I think we believe that it leads to a greater immersion. When you know that uh, the world doesn't change and suddenly it, it feels more real. And it's the same way as um, when you realize that your item will not, cannot be uh, taken from you, it, it makes it more real. And so 
to make an analogy of the, of the previous slide, in that case, the game world itself is owned by the player. The logic, basically the logic and the items. So we are building, we are using, we are basically currently exploring. So we are in alpha stage, we are exploring different uh, EVM chain. Uh, there, is a, there is a lot of work going on. We are still early in the space. Uh, but yeah, so basically that's kind of an overview of what we are using. And again, like a few uh, screen, screen capture to again show you how it looks. And it's basically a web-based, uh, fully web-based. Uh, so here is the architecture, the overall architecture of our, of our game. So there is two users here. They, they, they have a client, which is basically any, any device that, uh, that can uh, run a web browser. And then they make action on the smart contract. And so we have a backend system just to make the experience uh, a little bit, uh, like a lot better, basically. Because we have, uh, obviously, when everything on the blockchain, you have some issue, like, for example, the, the map. If we had to fetch all the events that are happening on, uh, on the map when you load the, the game, it will be uh, like a nightmare. So what we do is that our backend system will cache all the events and provide a WebSocket server so whenever uh, things happen, every client are updated. So, and on top of that, we can add uh, online presence. So when there is a new player online, uh, you can know you can interact with the other players. And so, on, on the, by, by being on the web, we can have, have a very simple uh, onboarding flow. So you, you come to the website, you choose a character, you set up a wallet, and then you make one payment. So this is not a free-to-play game. You just make one payment, but then um, we implement a food mechanism which abstracts away uh, the transaction. It's basically similar to the uh, burner wallet, except that you still have a wallet that that you set up before. Uh, but you can make any action with a, like a transparent, like just I click on this button and it uh, make a transaction behind the scene. And the way it works is that basically the payment, the value that you put in the first place is stored on a smart contract and every move is submitted on behalf of the user. So you can think of a meta transaction like uh, system. And then every move basically will reduce that. So to pay the gas on, on the, on the sidechain. Um, and then player refill when needed. And at the core of the game is a dungeon contract, which basically enforces the rule of the game. And the way it works is that all the characters that you own are actually NFT. So you can uh, play the, make your character go in the dungeon and uh, um, get XP, get coins. And I mean, the coin will, will belong to you, but the character itself will have uh, data that increase. So you can then trade it. And the way it works is that when you go join the dungeon, you are basically giving ownership of your character to the dungeon. And from that point on, the, the dungeon, you are bound by the rule, your character is bound by the rule of the dungeon. So as you explore further into the dungeon, you always run the risk of not being able to go back. And so it is, um, so basically to get back, on, because since to get back ownership of the item, you need to, to exit the dungeon, you have to make strategic decisions. Because if you die, you, you will lose your item and you will lose part of your XP. Uh, so the XP, basically, you will lose your character and you will be able to create a new character and, uh, can, and keeping some of the XP. And the idea of that is that it increases immersion. And so we believe that you will feel that you are yourself in the dungeon. And I think that basically is the core of, of fully on-chain uh, gaming is this uh, a feeling of presence where you suddenly feel you are part of the world that you can't feel in any other game. And uh, on the technical side, like we had to implement randomness uh, because we wanted to have this kind of feeling, as a, first of all, for the procedurally generated aspect and for the combat mechanism. And so we came to this solution where um, we basically, for every action that requires randomness, you will uh, record the block number, only that. You will not perform the actual action. You will just record the block number. And as soon as the transaction is mined, the front end will be able to compute the outcome at that point. So we just need to wait one block. But what it means is that now the contract need to, for the next action, need to actualize the previous action. But you will be able to do so because he, at that point, it will have access to the previous block hash and be able to, to perform the outcome. 
And so basically, you can, in, a, in other words, it's be, the smart contract lives in the past, but it's guaranteed to be able to compute the present. So we use pure function on the smart contract side, so we can actually use the same exact function in a VM on the front end and back end to kind of, uh, without the need to re-implement the logic. And then, obviously, if you know about block hash, you know that not all, all of them are saved, so we have a block hash register that store it. Uh, that stores the hash, and it do that every time a player make an action. But there is a possibility that no player come for a certain amount of time, and then we have a bot that will ensure that um, that the block hash are, are saved. And obviously, as you can imagine, making a fully on-chain game has uh, constraint. So we basically design the game around this constraint. So the first thing is slow, so we make a turn-based game. Uh, there is computation limitation, so we design simple rule, but sometimes you can replace complex rule by simple rule plus more data. And so that's what we do with our combat system. I will not go into detail here, I invite you to play, but it's, it has some depth while the, the mechanism remains simple. Then multiplayer uh, have some constraint. It's not necessarily only about the blockchain, but about the fact that we wanted player to come and go. And so we couldn't make it, okay, I wait the turn of the other, etc. And we couldn't do time-based because it's, uh, on it, the, the time of transaction are un unreliable. So we have a kind of a different mechanism that the monsters that live in, the, in that world uh, are shared among the player, but they have a kind of a one-to-one -one combat mechanism. That, that you can, but you can still collaborate to fight. Then there is other challenge. So obviously, I mentioned it's a fully on-chain game, but that's kind of the dream. So now um, we are running on the side chain. We are waiting for layer two solution to mature, and they are actually maturing. So we expect this to coming very soon, be able to um, to actually make the dream a reality. But for now, our first goal is to release it on an EVM uh, public blockchain like XDAI or Matic that can re re support what we need. It will already uh, give us some benefit, like for example, uh, the fact that the game is independent of the creator. It will not be independent of, of, this, uh, of the validator of the chain, but will be independent of, of ourselves. Uh, and then the other challenge is randomness. And there is also some work going on here with VDF and other solutions, so we are looking at them. Um, but for now, yeah, we just rely on, uh, on the side chain we run on. Uh, yeah, because w one thing we need is that we want them to have one r unpredictable random number at every, at every block. And we are looking actually forward to see more game uh, exploring that space. It will be exciting to see uh, more, more game like that. We, uh, we launched an alpha, uh, so we launch it on the POA testnet, uh, so-called with a five second block time and a, a very low gas cost. We had like a uh, hundred player, uh, and like the uh, average gameplay was quite impressive, 17 minutes, uh, and they kind of try the game quite intensively. Um, we had also a great feedback, and the, our next focus now is about designing the economy and the, and the business model, and uh, so there is still a lot of work to do, but we are really happy of, of our result at the alpha. And so here you can see uh, the whole map, only after two weeks, there was 2,400 room, and uh, actually a room is not only moving, because you encounter monsters, so it means they had to fight the monster to go past. And the more you go deeper in the dungeon, the more the monsters are difficult, and so that's actually quite uh, impressive. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically it. So you've if you want, if you have a web browser or whatever, you can just scan this QR code and there is 100 uh, key available and, and you can play. Thank you. Questions? Yeah, um, you said that your games are uh, inherently slow because of the blockchain, but do you wait for a certain number of confirmations, block confirmation, to confirm an action to the user, or do you do some optimistic uh, information given to the user, like on the pending block, or after one or two confirmations? We wait you... one confirmation, yeah. Okay, and if there is a reorg, do you...? Yeah, I mean, uh, potentially there could be things like that on 
on the sidechain we are working on, it will be unlikely. Uh, so it's more like a, a, on the UI we will have to do some work, yeah, kind of to say, oh, actually something else happened. Uh, yeah, that's that's a. Okay, so that's another challenge for the future. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, definitely. I should have mentioned that. <laughs> Hi, um, are you planning to do an uh, SDK? Um, I would like to see a blockchain RPG maker or something. Ah, that <laughs> sounds great, yeah. We we had the idea to have a part of a player doing, um, creating things in the game. So we might, maybe it won't be that, but it will be something where player can create. Hi. Um, if uh, the win or the lose are of the player uh, can be uh, random in some way, uh, are, aren't you afraid of being seen as a gambling game? Because uh, if your character is uh, worth something, and um, you can sell it uh, to other people or it, it it have a, a value. If you lose it in a dungeon or thing like that, or if you ga grab more coins, uh, which also have value, it could be seen as a gambling game. So I I wonder how, how you you manage that. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, we feel that the randomness part is is not as important for the skill. So if you look at the combat mechanism. It's really a tactical game, and random. Like, it's like many games have randomness part, but uh, it's more a skill game. So, I mean, compared to poker, for example, it's definitely more skill than poker. Like, yeah. I mean, that. Yeah, that's how I would see it. Yeah. No more question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.